Hello, beach friends. Today, we're going to be going on a shell tour. So we'll start our day over at the Goodland Boat Park over in Goodland, Florida. You can see all the shellers and the tours leaving for the morning. And you'll also notice that they're bundling up because beach friends, it was a brisk February morning when I went on this tour. And we'll talk about that a little later. As luck would have it, we're headed to an island called Shell Island. And I've never been there. So I'm super excited to see what kind of goodies we're gonna find now with a name like shell island you know there's gonna be some good stuff out there but just how good well let's just say it's gonna be one of those trips I will not soon forget so if you are ready to go explore shell island let's go to the beach Okay, I hope everybody's ready to go to Shell Island. I took a tour with Real Kind, and eventually I will tour with everybody. Today I'm going with Real Kind just so I can share my experience with you. The char I took the four hour tour and it cost with tax and everything $141.45, and then there is an additional parking fee at the boat park of $10. I will put all the information in the description below. Now, when I was on the mainland, I was able to determine it was 51 degrees, the tide was low, which is why I chose to go on this particular day. In the distance there, you can see Cape Romano. So that's what that little spot is out there. And we are here on Shell Island. Now, the captain had asked us if we wanted to go to Kais or if we wanted to go to Shell Island. And happily, the other two women on the tour decided Shell Island. So that is why we're here. Super excited. All right, we're going to look at and little bit of a pitted apple murex and I'm headed out that away. So I'm gonna kind of see what's on the beach here as I make my way over there. So we have a lightning whelk that I decided not to keep and then this one that I decided, but yes, that is a keeper. So we're just gonna make our way over to that spot near the water and along the way if anything kind of jumps out at me. I know that the tide is coming in so I don't want to dilly dally too much over here because there's only a little window that that tide is going to be out. It looks like I couldn't resist this little common nutmeg. So that's another little treasure. So I'm, you know, quickly trying to make my way over there. But, you know, if I do see something good, I am definitely going to stop and pick that up. Look at these piles. So this is called Shell Island and we are going to do a whole bunch of exploring. So I'm going to share everything with you. Here we have a little gem of a find. This is a gaudy nautica. That is a colorful moon snail. Oh, and a little top snail. Okay, fantastic. So I'm still kind of scanning. I'm kind of shelling quickly, but I am kind of spying things that I can't resist, like this little banded tulip. And check out this apple murex. Look at the texture on it. It's almost lacy, like its cousin, the lace murex, but that is in apple murex. So that's where I'm headed out over there because the tide is gonna come in and cover that. And as we saw earlier, it is brisk. It is 51 degrees out, or at least on the mainland it was. So here I don't have cell service. So I have no idea what the temperature is. I, have, I know the tide is coming in, but beyond that, I can't really check. So I'm just going to do what I can with the knowledge that I have. And I know that that is an apple murex with some weird stuff on it, but I'm going to keep it anyway. And then that is a banded tulip. Great sign, great shells. So I'm going to do a little bit exploring now out there in the distance, right there. I do see a little lump. And so my advice to you would be, if you do see a lump like that, go check it out. The other shells will be there. I know the tide is coming in, but those big lumps, all right, just check out that little banded tulip. You know, there are two other people on this tour. If I was here by myself, I would take my time, but I kind of wanted to get to it first. Now I figure, okay, it's probably, probably got a hermit crab in there and okay, at least there's no animal in there and there's no crab in there. You know what that means? That means it's a keeper, holy smokes. 
Oh, Shell Island, you're going to probably be one of my favorites. So that is a fantastic lightning whelk. And it's a keeper. And I really am. I'm like, I just, I cannot believe this. Over the moon. Now, there are a few chitons on there. There are a couple little like bug-like creatures. So I did gently remove them. But I was not going to leave that show behind just because a couple of chitons were on there. So that is a keeper. And I am just over the moon. Like one of the first things I get. I'm so excited. But I'm still going to keep going. I'm not going to you know, take too much time to revel in it because I only have so much time on this island. That is an olive, a lettered olive, and it actually had a little kitten paw stuck in there. And then this is an egg casing from a pear whelk. Now, I don't know if the little baby snails in there are viable. It's not dried out, so I'm not going to take it. I'm going to leave it here. I just, I don't know. So I'm going to leave it there in the water in the hopes that little baby snails will be able to be born. And that is a white Atlantic simile. And I don't find them all that often, but to find them hinged like that is kind of cool. So that's a nice little shell. Whoa. Hello, alphabet cone. Oh, right. So alphabet cones are always really fun to find. Let's clean it up a little bit and see what it looks like without sand. All right, yeah, that's, that's decent. It's got a couple little pit marks on it, but nothing that's gonna prevent me from taking it home. All right, cool. Another lightning whelk. And then if we quickly just take a look, look at the center of that shell with the color in it still. And so that's what happens. It keeps, you know, this shell, if it were alive, would just continue to grow and get larger. But that center area, that's really going to stay the same. The, sh the sh animal is just going to continue to build its shell. Another alphabet cone. Oh, okay. All right, it's not perfect, but still pretty decent. I want to hold on to that alphabet cone. Very, very cool. All right, now these are false angel wings. You can tell because the texture is really just on the kind of the bigger side of the shell. And as it tapers down, that texture is kind of much flatter versus a real angel wing like this one, although it's very beat up. I want to show you that that texture continues throughout the entire shell. So that is an angel wing, albeit, yeah, we're, we're not going to keep that. Just wanted to show you the difference between the false and the real one. Oh, here's another false creature. So that is a false shark eye. And I will show you a little bit later. There's an indentation right there. So we're going to look at a couple of them. And that's the differentiation between the false shark eye and then the true shark eye. All right, another nutmeg. Fantastic. Those are generally whole. And they're generally that color. They're, they're hardy little shells. And here we have a true tulip. Now those are much harder to find than the banded tulips, which conveniently happens to be right here. So we have the true tulip on the bottom, the banded tulip on top. I'm just gonna pause for just a second, just so we can kind of look. It's easy to tell because of those bands. Now that one on the right, this one here, that is the banded tulip. It's going to have those very deliberate, very dark bands most of the time. Not always, whereas the true tulip really just has those consistent other bands that are a little bit closer together. And that is a bay scallop. Nice color. Looks like it's a little bit faded. Beautiful, beautiful bay scallop. Eh, it's a little discolored. I'll probably try to work on that. Oh, did I mention I found a big lightning whelk? I just wanted to throw that out. I don't want to forget that <laughs> I have this massive shell in my bag, but real happy about. And here is a live lightning whelk. So the animal is, for the most part, when you see it, it is black underneath. I guess if you look underneath, it is a little bit on the white side. They're just kind of gooey, squishy looking for the most part. But that was a live lightning whelk. And this is another true tulip. Those bands are not really dark and deliberate, much lighter and kind of consistent. And then this is a pretty decent size horse conch. All right, not one of the massive ones, but still a real nice size. I can probably work on the color on that one. Very nice find. Very happy with that horse conch. Oh, I think I might have just found one that's even better. I did. So it's about that one's just a hair bigger, beautiful color. So that is also a horse conch. That is the Florida State Shell. They get really big 
and it's always really fine, uh, fun rather, rather, very fun to find those shells. Now this is also a horse conch. So if you can kind of wrap your head around that, they just start out as these little tiny creatures and then they get quite big. So that is a little horse conch. And this is a cone. So that is a Florida cone. I do love finding those cones. That's a, yeah, it's a little chipped on the aperture, but that is okay. That is definitely a keeper. And so this is just a little look of Shell Island. And there's no one here. It is the two women that came on the tour with me and the boat captain. So the four of us are exploring this island all by ourselves. I was so happy that Real Kind took us to Shell Island. And that is another common nutmeg, another shell. Yep, it's gonna be a good day. And what else we got? Okay, that is another apple murex. That's a pretty shell. Nice texture, nice color. Oh, another little horse conch. And it does have a couple barnacles on it. No big deal. And they're empty. So I'm going to go ahead and hold on to that. Those barnacles should pop off. No problem. What? Oh, wow. Okay, so that's another alphabet cone. It's got some decent color on there. Not too worried about that green at all. The aperture's nice and intact. Fantastic alphabet cone. Yay. <laughs> yep, look at that. Two more. That was just crazy. I've, I've never found this many alphabet cones. Now that one is a little beat up, but they're still, you know, oh dear, that one's a little bit pitted. I don't care. I'm gonna use it for something else, but fantastic. Two more alphabet cones. Looks like a tulip. Yep, that was a banded tulip that I decided to abandon. And then that is a horse conch. Again, a pretty decent size. That'll clean up okay. Gonna hold on to that for sure. And a nutmeg. Oh, he's a little pointy. So that is another common nutmeg. For the most part, that's generally, they're gonna look pretty consistent. And then that is another little horse conch, which has a really deep color little bit unusual normally you know they're kind of on that bright orange color or that yellow color but that one's like a deep chestnut color awesome nice apple murex nice see it's got a little bit of that laciness to it i do think it's missing its top but everything else is just in such great condition and it's a nice size so that is an apple murex no way okay uh, who am I to, to, to question yet another alphabet cone? Pretty decent shape. Definitely going to hold on to that. And a hinged prickly cockle. Beautiful color on the inside. It's hinged, which is always really kind of fun, although it's really hard to keep them hinged, I will admit. So that is a prickly cockle. <laughs> and that is yet another alphabet cone. Holy smokes. Awesome. Let's take a look at that once it's kind of washed off. Oh yeah, beautiful. Beautiful alphabet cone. And they call it that because the markings can sometimes look like different letters of the alphabet. So that's why that's called an alphabet cone. Now here we have a critter. So this is one of the horse conchs we were talking about earlier, those kind of those smaller ones, and they get quite large, like almost two feet long, like big. And the animal is that bright pink part and the tide will come in. It's going to be fine. So I'm just going to leave it alone because I know that that tide is coming in. It will be fine. And we're just going to keep meandering around, see what other kind of fun things we can find. Looks like I spied another one of those lightning whelks. They're just irresistible. So, wow, been doing a lot of exploring, but let's let's try to warm up. Let's go for a little walk and enjoy some beach time.
Okay, here we have another colorful moon snail. Very nice. It's always, it's, even if you've picked up 30 of the same shell, it's going to have some sort of variation, the size difference. They're just so interesting. And that's another one of those white Atlantic semilies. And there was just a whole little bunch of them. And that happens where you'll just find a whole bunch of the same exact species. So right here again, I don't really see these all that often. So I'm just going to go ahead and pick up a couple of them, add them to my collection. And then I wasn't sure, like I'm looking at the footage when I was editing this, I'm like, what am I looking at? So right there, that is a live top snail. So I'm kind of trying, it's a little gooey, it's kind of like that pink stuff, and I'm just debating, like I want to see it, I want to show you, but I don't necessarily want to disturb it. So all these things are kind of going through my head, but I do want to take a little bit of a closer look at it because there's something else that's actually really cool. Not just the live top snail, but what it's attached to. So that is a top snail, that little gooey pink part. So that is the animal and it's attached to a jingle, which is hinged. And you, it's very, very rare to find a hinged jingle. The bottom part will have that little hole in it because it has little hairs that kind of go through the shell, adhere it to something else. And it has come loose to whatever it was attached to. And this top snail seems to have uh, been attracted to it. Not sure why. And oh dear, I'm really sorry, friend. It's so cold. My hands aren't really working all that well, but it's worth it. Cause look, yep. Just wanted to remind you, did find giant lightning whelk. So yeah, it's pretty chilly out, but that's not dampening my spirits. I'm still really grateful to be here and excited to see what other things we're going to come upon. So I wanted to come up onto the actual shell piles just to give you a peek of what's here. It's your ponderous arcs, your cockles, your crossbarred Venus, even though that was very worn down. So it's your typical guy, it's your little oyster. Now for the most part, you know, I'm not going to find my most treasured shells up here, but you never know. So I'd like to at least come take a peek. Let's just kind of see what's up here. Okay, we have ourselves a buttercup leucine. Now those get to about two and a half inches long. So that is looking like a maximum size buttercup leucine. Kind of cool. Gonna go see what I mean? Gonna, I'm gonna hold on to that. I'm not sure what you collect. I guess we all have our favorites. We all kind of gravitate toward certain things. So that's just a little peek at that shell pile and that pile goes all along and then all around. So for the most part, it's sand and shells. So this entire island, that's where we landed up over there and then out there. Yeah, that's kind of covered by water at this point. So I was that's the spot I was in earlier when I was kind of in the water. Now let's talk about the temperature. I noticed, or I had mentioned earlier, it was 51 degrees out and I honestly didn't dress well. My, I am freezing. I did buy scuba boots. The water just kept getting in them and I kind of just gave up. So I'm wearing just water shoes, um, leggings and shorts, and I am freezing my tail off. So I'm going to go ahead and look for some kind of rubber boots. So if you guys are going to go on a tour and it's going to be chilly, some, keep your feet dry. Be, I made that mistake. They were numb for about half the time. And <laughs> so sometimes I'm not getting it right, but I'm happy to pass along the things that I'm learning along the way. See, like it's worth it. Like this beautiful pair well. So that's the type of animal that we had found that egg casing earlier. And that came from that kind of animal, a pear whelk. And then this is another one of those colorful moon snails. I love checking out, okay, how big is it? What kind of pattern does it have? Is it really strong? Is it kind of delicate? I just, all the different attributes that these shells have really just fascinate me. And that piece, I was just kind of scanning for a texture. I did notice it was just a piece of an apple murex. So it's not just the big old shells that are kind of laying on top. Sometimes you want to look in between things just to see if maybe there's just a piece of something kind of poking out. And with any luck, there's a big old piece of shell, you know, attached to that. Holy smokes. Okay. Another alphabet cone. Delightful. All right. And it's definitely not as in good a shape as some of those other ones, but still 
really fascinating to find that many alphabet cones in the same trip. <gasps> okay, that is a piece of a true tulip right there. I wanted to show you and I'm really kind of hoping, okay, that's a decent size. I mean, it could have been a lot bigger and oh, there's a barnacle on it. Let's see. Okay, no problem. That barnacle is not viable. It literally just fell off. So that is a true tulip. They get much bigger than the banded tulips. Really happy with that because again, they're much harder to find. And a lightning whelk. All right, it's got a little green hair. No problem. That's not going to worry me at all. That'll clean up quite nicely. All right, and I see another piece. Now, if you're going to go digging, be really careful. Those shells can be sharp. If I'm going to dig, I try to I do this, but I would use a shell if I'm really going to try to scoop things out. Oh, that's real pretty. All right, let's see what that looks like. Oh, look how dark and it's got little kind of points on it. Yeah, <laughs> can't resist another lightning whelk. Speaking of lightning whelks, look at how pretty that one is. Really dark color, gorgeous. Oh, while I'm here, might as well check out this Apple Murex. Yeah, yeah, he's decent, he or she. Lovely couple of shells. All right, so I'm in the water. All right, we did find, oh, and this one is probably my favorite of the day, my favorite Apple Murex. It's big. It also has those texture, that lacy texture. And then just in case you really observant people, this is the same shot with the Apple Murex. That shell right there, that was just a beat up pear whelk. You might've thought that you saw that in the background. I thought maybe it was an albino lightning whelk, but it wasn't. Just wanna clear that up. <laughs> Another alphabet cone, fantastic. Yep. I know it's a little faded, but that's okay. I'm going to hold on to that anyway. And what do we got? Okay. So here is another moon snail. So this is a shark eye. And then over here, that one's really, really great. That gouged out area there. That's what makes it a false shark eye. The quote unquote real shark eyes won't have that. That is a crown conch. It has probably seen better days, but it has nice color on it. So probably gonna hold on to that. And then another colorful moon snail, also known as a gaudy nautica. So it's like a cousin of the shark eye. Oh, look at that. That is, whoa, that is very light is what that is. And it is a little windy. So in addition to being cold, it's a little windy. That's a rough scallop of the yellow variety and I rarely find yellow scallops. So that's pretty cool. Sure. Yeah. Go ahead and hold on to that alphabet cone. Clearly a fantastic day for alphabet. Cone. I have never found this many in the same day. So it's pretty exciting. All those cones and all of these other wonderful shells like this gaudy nautica. That's a Pretty decent size one. Yep, when you hold it like that, that is a real nice size. Colorful moon snail, also known as a gaudy nautica. Awesome. A little Florida cone. Yep, might as well hold on to that too while we're here. Really great day for cones. I do like some cones. And a banded tulip. Yep, you can see those nice dark, kind of like quarter inch space bands on it. Okay, here's another moon snail. Let's check it out and see if it is a false shark eye or a real shark eye. Let's see. All right, it's got a little bit. Ah, it's questionable. That, <laughs> I'm not sure if that's a true, but I can tell you it's pretty. So it is a keeper. <gasps> Look at the gorgeous color on that living. Florida fighting conch. So that's just a little juvenile one with a gorgeous chocolate color. But it's a critter. I'm gonna leave it where it is. And what else do I spy? Another little horse conch. All right, empty. Excellent. Now hermit crabs do really like those shells, so I'm super careful to make sure there's nothing in there. And for the most part, I'm looking down when I'm on the beach, but I do like to kind of give you an idea of what the surroundings look like and it's beautiful. All right, we have another banded tulip. 
Can you really have too many banded tulips? Ah, I don't think so. So we're going to go ahead and hold on to that one as well. Oh, and another colorful moon snail. A couple of shells in there. There we go. Beautiful. All right, so that is another moon snail. Gaudy Nautica. Awesome. And there's only one of those. We don't have the, like, the... The false ones and the true ones like this guy. So that's a shark eye. And that's a false shark eye because that area there, that gouged out area, that's what makes that a false shark eye. Pretty cool. And another olive. I still haven't found my albino olive, but I'm not going to complain because at least I'm getting to find these lettered ones. Big fat beauty. And another moon snail, another shark eye. All right, that one looks like a true shark eye. Kind of hard to tell. It's a little questionable. And my hands are not, <laughs> it was cold and my hands just weren't working so good. So, okay, I do see a couple of things. All right, here is a nutmeg. All right, fantastic. And I see a little piece of moon snail. And of course, I'm hoping that that's not just a piece and that I'll, yeah, I'll hope that's not attached to the rest of the shell. Oh, well, we have this little nutmeg. Another lettered olive. Real pretty, fat, chubby, glossy, nice M's on there. It's kind of got some unusual markings. It's kind of fun. Okay, critter alert. Now these, see that beautiful like leopard looking pattern? Sometimes you'll just find the actual carapaces, just the shells of these crabs. And the, for whatever reason, my camera kind of freaked out. So I don't have a lot of video of this gorgeous calico box crab. So that's what those are called. And sometimes you'll see that kind of cool leopard pattern on the beach. It's just the shell of this cool crab. And I'm so bummed because I know adults and second graders alike love looking at these awesome little critters. I'll find more. Spring is coming. We're going to get to see all sorts of cool things like this. This is a yellow prickly cockle. They are shaped. They're a little bit more round than the other regular old prickly cockles. Kind of fun. And that is a Florida fighting conch that is occupied with the actual snail. So that is going to need to stay here. Bummer, because I do kind of like those brown ones. Oh, did I mention I found a big lightning whelk? I just want to throw that out there because it, it was kind of exciting. And then here we have some bay scallops and you can kind of see the difference in the coloring of them. That one on the bottom is a little bit lighter. I know, kind of pointing out the obvious. Oh, and you know, if we we're going to leave here, with one last shell, I suspect it really should be an alphabet cone. It was such a good day for cones. So that is going to close out our time here on Shell Island. Now, what I would recommend for sure, if you're going to come out and it's going to be cold, uh, bundle up. Um, definitely on the boat ride, I might recommend that you wear something, you know, a uh, maybe a raincoat or something that's going to kind of cut that wind because not only was it cold getting out there, you might be wet from kind of trudging around. And then on the boat, you're going to go a little bit faster. It's going to be beautiful. I love these tours, love being out on the water, but it can be chilly. So just prepare, prepare for your ride. And again, um, with real kind, because there was only three of us on the boat, it was a smaller boat. And perhaps that's why we were able to get to Shell Island. The tide was really low. And once I got back on land, I checked it was 59. It did not really warm up at all while I was out there. However, I'm not going to complain because I'm pretty psyched with this giant lightning whelk that I got to keep. Now, the aperture is a little bit broken there, but hey, beggars can't be choosers. I'm still, still very psyched with that awesome shell. And managed to find a couple of other kind of cool things too. So a bunch of those horse conks and a nice decent size too. We have the white Atlantic semeles, got the uh, sunray Venus, couple of prickly cockles. We've got a bunch of nutmegs, couple of lightning whelks and a pear whelk, bunch of top snails. And then we did get some lettered olives. We got a bunch of scallops, 
some shark eyes. Oh, including that yellow, I almost missed that yellow rough scallop, which was super cool. Shark eyes, colorful moon snails. We got some apple murex, whole pile of tulips, including a couple of true tulips, which was kind of exciting. And then all of those alphabet cones, completely crazy that there would be that many on the same day. Well, that was fun. Thank you very much, Real Kind. And thank you, Patreons, for monetarily supporting me and helping me go out on these experiences and sharing what you may encounter if you happen to go on one of these tours. So next week we are headed to Captiva and I do find a couple of things that I don't normally find. So I hope you have yourself a great week and I will see you again next Sunday.